The hardest part about designing custom keyboards is figuring out what kind of layout you want for your keyboard. Obviously, when you're building a custom keyboard, you have to have a custom PCB designed and built. So if you get the design wrong, you're not quite happy with the way it feels or you want to change the number of keys, you have to then send off for a new PCB and obviously wait for that and build the keyboard. If you've seen some other videos on my custom keyboard journey, you'll see that through that process, I've radically changed the shape and style of those keyboards as my journey has gone further down the rabbit hole. So I started off with loads of keys and then obviously ended up going right down to a 16 key layout. And then I went back up to an 18 key layout and all the while, changing the kind of position of those keys in my layouts as well. So that iterative process has been super fun, but it's obviously involved quite a lot of going back and forth and getting new PCBs built and using different keyboards just to have that experimental process. So through that process, I've had to work out sort of ways of, of experimenting and working out what kind of layout I might want. And of course, you can use things like ErgoPad where you tap a screen on the iPad to give you an approximate idea of how you would want your keys positioned. And you could try putting switches on a piece of cardboard and moving them around and just kind of experimenting and drawing and of course, living with those keyboards when you get to use them as well. And then you can obviously iterate that in a future design. So obviously iterating a custom PCB design is actually very easy with a service like PCBWay who are sponsoring this video so they offer super affordable PCB fabrication options right the way through to their advanced PCB fabrication which includes all kinds of interesting advanced color schemes things like transparent solder mask with a black core board and all kinds of amazing things on that advanced service and I'm very happy to recommend the service they provide I was actually using them long before they started sponsoring these videos there are so many variables when you're designing a custom keyboard layout you've got to consider things like do you want a splay in your columns do you want a stagger in your columns how many keys do you want what's the thumb cluster gonna do and then you've got all kinds of interesting subtle things like the position, the height of your thumb key to the rest of the board will change the angle of your hand and the same effect on the pinky key. And then that affects your wrist angle and all these kinds of decisions that are very hard to understand until you actually daily drive these layouts. So what I'm looking at in this video is this extraordinary piece of hardware that lets you prototype keyboard layouts without having to build a new board every time. And the hardware on this thing is absolutely fascinating. So it's a solid magnetic base and these bases are super heavy and super solid. And I don't really understand how on earth this works, but you get these magnetic keys. Each one of these keys actually contains its own hot swap board and controller. And then you can put your own MX switches in it. Obviously it comes with switches and keycaps, but they are hot swappable. So you can still swap out the switches on these for no trouble to experiment with a different kind of feeling switches as well. So these keys magnetically stick onto the base and they work in any orientation. They haven't got to be aligned with these grooves on the board or anything like that. I wasn't quite sure if you had to have them in a certain way. No, they do absolutely work in any orientation, in any position, as long as they're stuck on this surface. And the magnetic force is really strong. There's no way these keys will move around when you're typing, even if you are a particularly bashy typer. Now, fantastically, these switches also have RGB backlighting built into them as well, and that just all works through this magnetic power connection thing. So, of course, having the ability to move these keys around, take keys away, add them in, put them in different positions, different angles, set it up exactly how you like is exactly the perfect prototyping tool when you're trying to come up with a new keyboard design because you can actually really live with this and you can type with this you can use it with the machine you can code with it and write with it and really get a feel for a long-term use and you could actually just use this as your daily driver keyboard this hardware really is quite fascinating i know there are quite a few different options when you buy this keyboard uh, but weirdly the one i got came with a sculpted keycap set so i think a board that's designed for you to experiment with and move keys all over the place shouldn't have sculpted keycaps just makes it very difficult to move keys around you don't want to have that you want to be able to move a key from one row to another without worrying about the profile of the keycap um, so they need to be a single profile keycap and of course being a fully custom keyboard I don't see any reason why these keycaps should have legends either using legends is only going to slow you down if you're learning new layouts it's better just to be able to use the software to change the layouts and then you just have blank keycaps and you memorize the positions of the keys I'm not sure if they offer that option if they do that would be my recommendation when you're ordering one of these but of course you can put your own keycaps on this quite easily in fact the set of ZS say Moonlander blanks that do have the little space for the RGB lighting to come through would be a great fit for this kind of board. So this is where things get a little bit quirky. This is a split keyboard, but each half has its own USB connection to your host. And that means by default, there's no connection between the two halves. So when you switch to a different layer in one half, the other half doesn't know about that layer switch. And that means you need to have a little helper application running on the host device. So this is definitely something that you would set up in a desktop environment where you can keep that host software running on your machine and you know 
know it's all going to work okay. And the, and the little helper application does keep the two halves then in sync. And that does lead us on to the main issue with this incredible piece of hardware, and that is the software side, which unfortunately does really let it down. So I'm on a Mac here, and there is no native Mac software from the vendor of this keyboard. So things got pretty complicated pretty quickly when I was setting this up. The only software they have is for Windows. From screenshots, it does look pretty clunky with a lot of non-localized text and, and so on. So fortunately, there is a Python project which brings support for this keyboard to Mac and Linux. But that really was quite a headache to get it up and running on my Mac. I had to jump through a lot of hoops to get that running. I had to switch to a Rosetta version of the terminal to install some of the dependencies, and, and it just got pretty complicated pretty quickly. I had a lot of errors. But basically, after Googling each of the errors, I kind of found a workaround for every one and eventually just kept going until I managed to get the software up and running. And I got to a point where I can actually run the helper application to keep the two halves in sync, as well as put new maps onto the keys. But that's when I then hit another barrier. I was trying to set up the different layers on this keyboard, which according to the syntax in the config file seems pretty straightforward. And if you look into the code, you can actually see the three different options that you've got for the different kinds of layer switching. So what I tend to do on my keyboards a lot is have a one-shot layer switch. So especially with my small layout where I have a second alpha layer, I have a one-shot switch to go into that layer. So the next key only will be from the second layer, and then it bounces me back into the first layer. And unfortunately, I couldn't get any of the three layer switch codes here to behave that way. So the only two layer switching behaviors I managed to get working were the on hold one where you hold the key down and the board stays in that layer while it's held down. That worked fine. And then another one where you would switch it and it would permanently stay in that layer until you go back to another layer. So I could only get two different kind of layer switching behaviors out of the board, even though there were three different config options. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, whether that's an issue with the Python project or actually if it's just a problem with the firmware on the boards, I don't know. But that did kind of mean that that was the end of the road for my experiment. Maybe there's someone out there who can help me get that up and running and I can actually really test this board using one of my layouts. But I think ultimately this board is really quite hobbled by the software here if you're not on Windows and it's quite a gamble as to whether or not you're going to get very far using the Python project here either. So I did email the vendor of the board to ask if there's anything that I'm missing with this layer switching commands and unfortunately they didn't really have anything to say there either. I think ultimately the software and support side of this board is a real problem and it is such a shame because the hardware is absolutely phenomenal. I think if you're a little bit of a hacker and you don't mind a bit of fiddling you could get the hardware here and have some real fun if you got involved with writing your own Python stuff I don't know uh, you could probably go quite far with it and have some real fun because I've never seen such an effective way of prototyping different layouts as what you can do with this board. I think if they ever managed to release fully supported cross-platform software for this keyboard it would be an absolute home run for anyone who wants a board they can use to prototype layouts with but also just anyone who actually is interested in experimenting with layouts you could use this as your daily driver board but it does need that improvement in the software before that really makes sense. If you're interested in this hardware please get in touch with them and encourage them to take the software side further. I would love to see this go further than it currently is. If you enjoyed this video check out this video next where I look at my unibody custom keyboard build which I built with ErgoGen and KiCad uh, uses low profile chalk switches and my 18 key layout and it's the keyboard I use with my iPad when I want something more portable. That's great fun. Check out these comments on that video to make sure it'll be worth your while and I'll see you there.